This time on Roadkill, Homeless Dave puts our stock car in the wall four years after we buy it. It's not my fault. Never is. <laughs> Finally, we are going to build the Roadkill stock car. We bought this thing like four years ago. It's a late model style paved oval track race car. And our plan had been to hop in it and just drive it across country. But for once, the corporate attorneys actually shut us down because a race car has no VIN number. That means you can have no insurance. And with no insurance, we cannot drive this thing on the street. We shoved the car into long-term storage and just watched it deteriorate. All sorts of good parts completely going to pot. Every single month when we're talking to ourselves going, Finnegan, Freiberger, what do you want to do for the next roadkill? It always comes up. Maybe we should slap a body on the stock car. We're finally going to do it. Remember this? <sighs> finally. It was less something. dusty the last time I saw it. How long ago did you buy this? I don't remember. What I do remember, though, is we paid 7,600 bucks for it. Okay, that was a good investment. I don't know, no, no, no. remember, it's CZ 350 crate motor. Jericho. Uh, yeah, clutchless four speed, quick, quick change rear end. Which all works great when you park it and let it sit for yes. however long it's been. Yeah, and somebody hit it too. I know, that's unbelievable. But that gives us an excuse to tear the rest of it apart. What this is, is like an amateur class stock car that would run at oval tracks, but the guy who we bought it from has it set up for road racing, so it'll steer both directions. It's got a small block Chevy in it, a Jericho four speed, quick change rear end, wide five hubs, Willwood brakes, all this trick stuff, and we have never used it. And right now we're gonna gut it and find out if we can put a street legal body on it. I just need something with a VIN number and a license plate and insurance, and then, it's a 70 Monte Carlo or a 74 Ford Courier, whatever it is we decide to do. I think the first thing we have to do is tear the body off of it because I just don't know how high is up as far as how wide the thing is in the back. And the frame rails are 65 inches wide. The body is like another eight inches past that, so. Well, have you seen how low this thing is? We have no idea what we're doing until we rip the body off. Let's take it apart. Let's do that. Get out your sawzall. How are we gonna get rid of it? Shop manager's problem, not mine. <laughs> We might be setting a record for disassembling a car. We may have a future at a chop shop. Guessing that's not legal anymore. I could be wrong, considering I can shred it with my hand. Tearing it apart was pretty easy, but the thing is, this car still has not run in more than four years that we know of, and we've never driven it. So before we get to bolting a new body onto the chassis, we should probably fire it up and find out if everything's okay. Which, by the way, shows remarkable roadkill forethought. Oh, that was quite a bit. I like it. Like new. What'd I tell you? This thing's growing up. Okay, good enough for me. If we get rid of the exhaust and these cross braces, there's plenty of room to put another seat in there. Yeah, who knows what those cross braces are doing. It's just a crash structure from here to here. We don't need that, we're not gonna crash. Besides, this is your side of the car. <laughs> gonna need a new blade. It's ZZ Top. The problem now is that we need a body to put on this thing, and our standards are really low, so naturally I thought of Hector. That's right, the dude from Car Hex, which is where we went when we bought that 69 Buick and we needed a bunch of doors for it. This guy parts out GM cars like you can't believe, and sure enough, he hooked us up. 
check it out. A fully gutted, ready to go, legal, registered, ready for insurance, 1970 Chevy Monte Carlo. And it's kind of sad that this thing is fairly straight and pretty rust free, but you know what? We already learned how to aggravate the Monte Carlo guys with that whole lowrider thing that might have happened on a prior episode. Oh, 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 stop! <laughs> So we don't care. This is a Monte Carlo, it's delivered, and we're ready to hack. So our plan at this point is to cut the whole floor out of the car and then roll the chassis over and lower the car onto it and then eyeball the wheelbase and decide if we want to shorten the front or shorten the middle or shorten the rear. Now this is the part where we get really motivated because we have a stripped down stock car and we have a Monte Carlo body that's gutted. And right now Dave's gonna plasma cut the whole floor out of that. I'm gonna cut all the door bars out of this and then we're gonna marry them and it'll be amazing. Neither Finnegan nor I are really married to this body style, so I don't mind ruining this pristine floor. And if that bothers you, know that I will be returning this to Hector so he can sell it to some other chump, customer, who needs a rust-free floor. tech tip for the day. If you want to do this the right way, you really need to weld some cross braces and structure into the body so that it doesn't tweak and warp when you pull all the structure out of it. Clearly we don't care about doing it the right way because this is just going to be a mangled mess anyway. So do as we say, not as we do. dreams believe that on day two of this deal, the car would be stripped, the body would be ready to go onto the chassis. I did. I knew this was happening. It's not even lunchtime yet. We're rolling. Right now we're measuring how wide this thing is rail to rail so we can figure out if the body is going to fit. What is the measurement on the inside of the body? 59 and an eighth. And this is 63. So how much can you cut off that side? Each one of these tubes are two inches wide, so if you take two of them off, that's 59. How about how tall is it? Because we might end up hacking the rockers off. I want to set the roof on the roll cage. So this is 41 and three that, quarters. Yep. What is that? 41. We could cut the rockers off this. That would be cool. Yeah. It would be low. It would be really low. How wide is the outside of the rail to the outside of the rail? I think these will sit right on top of the existing rail. <laughs> 65 and a half. It's made to be. Wow. Yeah, see, it'll set right on top of that. We can attach these directly to those. Oh my God. That's like it was literally designed to fit. So here comes the problem. The wheelbase on the Monte Carlo body is 14 inches longer than the stock car chassis. And so Finnegan and I sort of got into it about how we were gonna make this all fit. He wanted to chop 14 inches out of the middle. I didn't like the way that was gonna make the roof line look. I was suggesting sliding the body back on the chassis like an altered wheelbase 60s drag car, and I knew that was gonna be ugly too. That wasn't the answer. Until finally, Brandon Galogli from Hot Rod walks in. He goes, easy, why don't you just cut the roof off the quarter panels and slide it rearwards? And so that's what we're gonna do. All of the shortening is gonna come out of the doors, but the window opening is gonna remain the same because we're gonna slide the roof rearward on the body. What could go wrong? There we go. Oh, I see daylight. Awesome. It's like you just unsnapped her bra. Up, go and for it. back. <laughs> All right, go. And got it. <laughs> That's weird looking. Yep. That's weird looking. Well, we did it. After all of that conflict about how to do this, Brandon from Hot Rod came in and suggested cutting the roof off and sliding it back. I think it was the perfect answer. It's gonna look goofy, but I think it's the best possible goofy given the constraints we were dealing with. This is the best case scenario for this application. The other you know, possibilities we could have had for a solution were not gonna be good. And as redonkulous as this looks, 
I think when it's done, it'll be amazing. Roadkill amazing, anyway. This is like day three of working on this junk, and I can't believe how much we got done during the first two days. Completely gutted it, we've got the body set down over the chassis, we've cut out everything we need to cut out from the body, we think. Now we're gonna cut the dash out to try and get the body even lower on the frame. Once we're done with that, I think we're gonna have to stop playing with the body, start working on getting a passenger seat into the frame. Yeah? Do we even have a passenger seat? The whole build on this car had to happen in five days, and honestly, after day three, it was like Groundhog Day. Wake up in the morning, grind, cut, file, hack, slash, plasma cut, do it again the next hour, and the day after that, and the day after that. Well, we're down to the part of this deal where only the essentials need to happen. And mounting the fuel filler, no matter where we put it, whether it's the trunk lid, the sail panel, here, it all requires some fabrication, so trying to decide what looks cool but won't take forever. We brought in our buddy Lucky to help out with this whole deal. And you know why they call him that, right? Because he gets to work with us. Somewhere there's a picture of this with a circle and a line through it. Fortunately, he was a big help handling all these little details that needed to happen, from wiring to plumbing in the fuel system to eyeballing the perfect look for a new radius on the wheel wells. He and I cut all the structure out of the doors and turned them just into skins that we could then shorten and weld into place, securing the final look of the vehicle that is now known as the Nascarlo. Well, the last time you saw it, we just got the NASCAR Lowe started, and now she's ready for her maiden voyage. We're going racing today. We're going to road trip this on the highway, semi-legally out to Paris Raceway, and go around in a circle on dirt. Yeah! Common sense says we should put a windshield in the car, fix the seat belts, mount the seat a little better, and then test drive it and hit the road. What we're going to do is fix the seat belt on Freiburger's side of the car, put on some helmets, and just drive down the road. We've got doors, we have seats, belts that I'm sort of fiddling with right now. Brand new Hoosier dirt track tires because we're going to a dirt track. I've never done clay before. I've done paved oval track, but not dirt. So this is gonna be fun if we make it that far. So apparently windshield is the key to I'm going entry and egress on this. Full Duke. Ah. Just going to the gas station. It's like strapping in for Bonneville. Well, we don't have any wheel wells in the back, so might as well keep it safe. <laughs> might as well keep it safe, he says. Oh, it's not that loud. What? We're fine. Oh, okay. Finally, the moment we have been waiting for for nearly four years. We are gonna drive the stock car on the street and man, are people digging it, and we haven't even left the driveway yet. This is attracting more attention than the vet cart. I like this better than the vet cart. I yeah. feel safe. Yeah, except for the no wheel well thing over the back tires by my head. And the no door bars. Yeah. And the no factory door protection. And the no windshield. And the gas line right there. Did you zip tie that back up? I did, just for you. Okay, thanks. You. Did you zip tie it next to that battery hot lead that's gonna ground out and burn? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, except for all of that, like this is way better than vet cars. Oh yeah. Because you can get out of this faster, you know? Seriously, this thing cruises like you can't believe. And by the way, the clutchless Jericho four-speed is a gift from God. You use the clutch to start and stop, but between gears, you just bang shift the thing and don't even worry about the clutch pedal. So we hit the highway and this thing is absolute misery and perfection rolled into one big ugly ball of Monte Carlo. Pretty good. Tires rub really bad. 
thin. Oh, they are? Yeah, they actually slow the car down. They're pretty thin, they will pop. Oh, good. The crazy thing is you have seen the junk that we drive on Roadkill. Like, think of the vet cart, think of the Jeep rod. Out of all of that stuff, the NASCARLO got more attention than anything I've ever been in. I can't believe the number of photos and thumbs up and kids running and screaming and people swerving out of the way. It was nutso. Ooh, monster tacos. This thing's flawless. That looks like we lost our air cleaner lid. I thought it was a paper plate, but nope. Oh, wow. Look at the condensation on the secondary butterflies. Pretty cool. Carburetor's cold. Latent heat of vaporization. Look at you getting all Mr. Wizard. I know. Get some Bill Nye Science guy going on here. So do you think we can rig something? We got an auto parts store and just put another lid on it. Yeah. Lock tight it in there. Because we are trying to go to a dirt track. Right. I do care about this one, unlike some of the other ones. I know, this thing runs good. Maybe we should get a lid. In fact, there's a Pep Boys, like two exits up the freeway. Let's go there. I don't know if you've had a look at this yet, but check this out. The floor situation in this thing is not good. Look at the leg room on the firewall right there. And I've got this padding me, which is kind of helping. Wouldn't want to give it up. Wow. It's amazing the driveways this thing can take. We're not just joyriding here. We've got a destination, the best possible place we could test the NASCARLO. Paris Auto Speedway, a half mile clay oval. Yes, this is a paved late model circle track car. I don't care, we're going dirt track racing. Look, dirt under our feet and under our tires because we are at Paris Speedway in beautiful Lake Paris, California and they have lights here, so it turns out it didn't matter we were 10 hours late to get here. We get to go racing. I gotta be honest, we really didn't have a plan. I didn't expect us to get this far, so we're by ourselves. We actually rented this place out. There is no one to race except each other using iPhone timing. I think what's gonna happen here is Freiburger's gonna get behind the wheel of a car he's never driven actually and go around a banked oval course that is downhill on these turns and uphill on these ones, and he's gonna attempt to not put it in the wall before I get to drive. And I gotta be honest, it drives so good and is so magical, even if he puts it in the wall and I don't get to race tonight, I'll still be in a good mood. It's that awesome. Until I realize he's destroyed the car and I don't get to drive it ever again, then I'll be pissed off. So I think we should each get some practice and then time a lap. I'm good with all that, as long as you don't crash during practice. No, I'll crash during my time lap. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go well, up I'm there pushing. for maximum visibility of your sideways shimmy into the wall action. No, this will be more like my uh-oh, 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 <laughs> I'm putting around in 35 miles an hour action. Oh, uh, then do I film or do I actually time you with my phone? Because I, I kind of want both to happen. I'm, I'll time you. I have There's plenty of cameras. My around. only dirt oval experience is 20 years ago, circle track, or literal round track with a sprint car. And was it like this, where one side is uphill and the other side is downhill? No, it was just a flat circle. Good but, luck. Yeah, no, I've never <laughs> done anything even remotely like this before, so it'll go fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> I, all the faith in the world of your abilities. Well, we made it here, which is really the only victory that we needed. It was surprisingly good. Thing drives really well. There's almost nothing wrong with it. And so, I'm gonna go break it. My plan is to go out there in the dirt track and take it really easy because <laughs> that is a big sweeping turn <laughs> and I want to keep this thing off the wall. At this point, I have never driven the Monte Carlo and I've never driven on a dirt oval before. I've got plenty of experience sliding cars around in dirt, but never on damp clay like this. And the guys at the track are telling me, there's only one rule, dude. Just keep this thing off the wall, and that's all I'm worried about. So I'm creeping up really slowly on getting a feel for the track. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, sideways around the corner. He got brave over there. Oh, he's drifted in this corner. Oh! Oh! Almost into the K-Rail. Almost. Will he come?
come in the pit to check his shorts? That's the question. genuinely concerned I'm gonna put it into the wall. going at like three tenths of what an actual dirt track racer could do, but it feels mint. This is a riot. Yeah. Oh no. Well, that was not keeping it off the wall. <laughs> okay, he's moving. That's good. Hey, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. That sucked. Oh yeah, it's not quite happy anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> that sucked a lot. Dude, it knocked the body loose. Oh yeah, big time. Wow. That hit pretty hard. Yeah, come look over here. Wow. Look where that wheel is and look where that. <laughs> what did I do differently? What? Once it started to go, it was just whoosh. Yeah, hey, look at your track. It drove right into the wall backwards. Wow, that's crazy. Well, so much for our greatest project car ever. All right, we could probably fix it. He told me to keep it off the wall and I didn't. Actually, I don't think it knocked the body loose. I think it knocked the rear end loose. Oh yeah, it broke, oh, yeah. It broke the um, pan hard bar. What a bummer. Well, that sucked. Dude, but I have to say, the first time when you came back out, yeah. you ripped. You picked up two seconds off your other lap. I was just figuring it out. Man, does that suck. This isn't bad though, because- look, the one thing we did all of this for is lying on the track. That was not keeping it off the wall. They're finding parts on the track down here. So apparently I crashed because it broke, not it broke because I crashed. That was the stupidest thing ever. I'm literally just barely getting the hang of this, just starting to pick up speed, and I cannot even figure out why I'm crashing. The only good news about this, for me anyway, is that it really wasn't my fault. The track guy immediately told me, I asked him, it's like, what did I do wrong? He's like, nothing, the car broke. And sure enough, you could see the marks in the dirt. It had broken a right front lower ball joint and just dug in and whipped the car around the opposite direction that I should have been hitting the wall if I had just oversteered the thing out of my own stupidity. You know what though? I know how to mount this better than we did the last time. So if we go get another 70, yeah. it'll be even cleaner. Perfect. Yeah. It's just evolution. Steak and beer for dinner? Let's go. <laughs> Only on Roadkill can you take a car that you just built and slam it into the wall at the circle track and call it a victory. But you know what? I think it really is. Just consider how long we've been wanting to do this. It's been like four years and we pulled it off. We drove the stock car on the street. We built it into something that looks really, really cool. And I may have hit the wall with it, but the good news is that's not really my fault. And better yet, it really leaves the legend of the NASCAR little hanging out there in the roadkill ether, leaving you to wonder, what will they do with it next? Will they fix it? Will it go to the junkyard? I'm thinking you'll find out on a future episode of Roadkill. And by future, I mean like four years from now. That is a pit bull. Yep. Dude, she's jogging. She is, look at that. Picking up the pace. That's never happened before.
Look at that. She knows where her seat is. Oh my God, it's working. No. It's working. Wow. I didn't have to heave her. Okay. There you go. Do not lick my face. Okay, we talked about this the oh. last time. Ah! Dog barf. I hope you have some Febreze, dude. It's everywhere. That is disgusting. Look at that. Oh, dumb dog. <laughs> <laughs> Your neighbors are gonna hate us. Oh, she peed on her leash. Come here. I got the dog. Hey! It's probably not good with the and everything. Oh, my doggy. Oh, my doggy. Don't lick my face. Don't lick my face. Okay, how cute you are, how much you snort.